there, freedomwinehearinggod.tv. Um, I've been under a lot of attack here lately, especially yesterday. Like, every, all the we got three computers and they all wouldn't work. <laughs> and I'm desperately trying to do stuff. Um, the Lord just keeps downloading a bunch of stuff on my lap, so I'm trying to be obedient, but there's just this constant warfare. What I first want to share, um, I got my notes on my computer, so I'm going to be looking back and forth, but anyhow, um, was a dream that I had, and the dream was um, the, the sixth of last month, and the dream was like this. I'll, first, I'll say the dream, and then I'll interpret it. I was in a city helping my husband unload the back of a truck and I see a swimming pool that bubbled insulation that is in the back of the the truck and I asked my husband if we could resell it because he was you know he had thrown it away and you know we're moving stuff out of this truck and whatever so I had asked if we could resell it. Then, uh, the next scene, I'm high up in this building, and I know my husband's around there somewhere as well. I'm looking off of a rooftop, and I see a kind of portal type of storm that is coming, so everybody runs inside. Uh, then, all of a sudden, uh, gravity is totally messed up, and bodies are just plastered to the ground. And I know I need to get to my room. So I am uh, apologizing as I'm crawling over bodies, and nobody else is really trying to do anything. They're just mobilized there, but I know I have to get to my room. So I'm very slowly crawling over these bodies. And when I get to my room, everything's fine. You know, I'm not, there's not a gravity issue. I don't know if something changed or it's just because I got to my room that I was okay. But anyhow, I look out in, in this big tall building and there is water, a very choppy, big, huge, huge swells. And there are like, I don't know how many stories high the building was versus this water, how high it was. But um, it's like a huge ocean out there. And it's dark water. The truck kind of speaks of like personal ministry. And my husband is actually Jesus, the Lord. The swimming pool is kind of like a a spiritual condition or a, a spiritual place or condition. There's this bubbled insulative stuff that sits on top of the surface of a swimming pool and its pur purpose is it uses the sun's rays and it actually is like a solar heating thing and it heats up the water so that you can swim. And so I feel like the Lord has, you know, my it's not really my husband, remember it's my Lord, it's the Lord and he's removed um, this covering, this insulating covering. And, you know, alas, that's why, you know, if those of you out there that can relate to me about the, the added warfare, if you're really noticing it like I am, that's what's going on there. Of course, I'm asking, can we resell it or can we have more time? Being up, up in the building in the storm, obviously, what's brewing in the future here is it's not going to be pretty and you know what's the scripture about you know you have you have to work while it's day because the night is coming and I feel like this gravity thing is like it's it's when okay there's this there's going to be a stopping point let's say something bad happens YouTube is not going to be my ministry anymore. It isn't going to be anything for you to glean from or to contribute to anymore. Things are going to change. So, in this hour, you need to be making the most of, of it. Doing what you can. So, anyhow, um, getting to the room. Getting to that safe place. 
getting to that intimacy with, with the Lord. And He'll keep you. You know, and Skyscraper is, is, a, is it's speaking of a higher spiritual thing. So that's why I'm sharing this with you because it's beyond a dream for me. It's a bigger thing. You know, around the 22nd, I started getting this, this song by Crowded House. It's actually called Something So Strong. And I just couldn't get it out of my head. And I still get it. You know, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll hear it. Feel free to look at the lyrics of that song. But, I, you know, what is that storm that was in my dream? It's like the deception that's coming. It's, you know, <laughs> it, it, all the stuff that's coming. And in the Crowded House song, you know, something so strong could carry us away. <laughs> and we know that that's scriptural, that, you know, that the Lord warns that it is so strong that even the elect might be deceived. The Lord is just really, you know, warning of the great deception that's coming, all that's coming. Um, a scripture that the Lord gave me recently is Jeremiah 14, 14. The prophets are prophesying falsehood in my name. I've neither sent them nor commanded them nor spoken to them. They are prophesying to you a false vision, divination, futility, and the deception of their own minds. And you've probably seen this. You know, we know the Harold camping thing has been big. Well, <laughs> you know, doesn't happen, doesn't happen. What happens when a lot of things keep happening, people keep screaming all these things, and stuff doesn't happen? Love grows cold because they're like, oh, God's not coming for you. People get in disbelief. A lot of people, you know, of course, myself, I would have been excited had uh, the Lord came back or, or whatever for uh, the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets. But, uh, you know, not all the pegs are lined up. There's other things that have to happen first, so I wasn't banking that all those other pegs were going to line up that quick. I mean, they can, but they're not all lined up yet. So, um, you know, then, then, you know, so all the people that were saying, oh, you know, the rapture's going to happen, blah, 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 blah. It didn't happen, okay? And... Then, uh, you know, the, the whole Elenin thing, you know, I'm open to, you know, the signs and whatever. I mean, that's, the Lord says, you know, we're going to see the signs in the heavens and whatnot. I got another scripture, Isaiah 47, 13 through 15. All the counsel you have received has only worn you out. Let your astrologers come forward, those stargazers who make predi predictions month by month. Let them save you from what is coming upon you. Surely they are like stubble. The fire will burn them up. They cannot even save themselves from the power of the flame. Here are no, here are no coals to warm anyone. Here is no fire to sit by. That is all they can do for you. These have labored with and trafficked with since childhood. Each of them goes on in his error. There is not one that can save you. All right, so, you know... A lot of the other stuff that I'm, I'm seeing here, you know, and, and you know this, there's a lot of New Age stuff with, you know, talking about the aliens and other civilizations and, and whatever. There's so much of it. But the problem is, is it's creeped over into Christianity big time. It's bad. In fact, you got Christians that are... Um, you know, oh, I'm just using this for the scientific knowledge. I know they're new age, but their their information on the scientific side is brilliant. And I, I'm not, you know, oh, God bless them and everything. But then they still take that information and stuff. Where do they get that information from? So you cannot, you know, mix that stuff. The other, the other mixtures are the Egypt stuff. I don't care what anyone thinks about um, Egyptology or any secret codes or numerology stuff. 
you know, stuff is planted everywhere. Uh, you know, there is going to be strong delusion. Who's to say that the Lord is, isn't going to give people what they want? If they're not going to turn to Him, that He's going to hand them over and let them dig and dig and dig. And, you know, you got Nostradamus and Edgar Casey. Where did they get their information from? And that's the problem is the information is out there it's accessible okay so with the whole Ellenin thing we've got signs that happened and awesome if if that's really what the alignment of some of the things in Revelations 12 is awesome um, but you know are things more stretched out than that you can't expect it to happen one after another you know, especially with all these, all the solar and sky activity that's going on. But anyhow, you know, it's throw your hands up in the air. Oh my gosh, Elenin's going to hit, hit. Or, oh my gosh, Elenin is piloted by aliens or Satan's coming down on Elenin or the rapture, rapture's coming down on Elenin and and then it's oh when Elenin reaches the other side all the debris from Elenin is going to uh, destroy you know hurt the earth and it's going to cause the, the three days of darkness and the blood red sun and all or moon and all that stuff it didn't happen <laughs> And, you know, okay, yesterday, or the day before, I don't know anymore, because all these, you know, all the hype, but uh, the, the latest comment was uh, the closest in between the Earth and the Moon. Oh, you know, what's that going to do? It's going to cause earthquakes and whatever, whatever. And it's just... There's, there's so much deception in uh, all this hype stuff going around and a lot of it is divination amongst Christians um, if you're going to take uh, Egyptology and divine the plan of God from it does that make any sense at all? no <laughs> you can't fuse the pagan with God you start from the Bible and you move forward and that's the problem you'll see with so many of these diviners out there is that they are doing the mixture doing the mixture and that's not what God wants us to do at all uh, we have to go out on complete faith so um, the, the latest thing the Lord has, has brought to me is uh, you know and I'm trying to upload this too but I I thought I better hurry up and record this because earlier today um, the Lord was playing a song in my head and it and over and over it was saying I keep waiting I keep waiting and <laughs> it's all like okay okay so apparently I have my window where equipment's gonna work and whatever so I better just stop and do this but anyhow, uh, in Isaiah 41, I'll be posting that video. And, and granted, you know, this is stuff that's already happened biblically or whatever, but it still applies today. Same kind of stuff going on. Um, but anyhow, when you jump down in uh, Isaiah 41 down to like where it's like verse 21, it says, present your case, the Lord says. Bring forth your strong arguments. You know, and it just continues to go on. And you can tell he's talking about, you know, he's talking about the idols. You know, can you speak? You know, are you gonna, you know, what can you do? What can you, if no one's proclaimed. Uh, no one's, there's no one who heard your words. And, you know, it's kind of like a, a mocking thing that the the Lord is is just totally making fun of the enemy but that's the thing is like who are the mouthpieces for these foreign gods and and for divination and, and all this stuff it's people and so at the very end um, 
you know, it talks about, uh, formerly I said to Zion, Behold, here they are, and to Jerusalem I will give a messenger of good news. But when I look, there is no one, and there is no counselor among them, who, if I ask, can give an answer. And so, you know, it says, Behold, all of them are false, their works are worthless, their molten images are wind and emptiness. And so, I just feel the, that the Lord is just really imploring the body to stay on the narrow road. Quit hopping around, and who cares about all this stuff going on? Uh, now is the time to draw that plumb line. People, you know, okay, what's happening? Okay, 11, 11, 11. That is to happen tomorrow because today is the 10th. So just just watch. Something's going on with the, the Hoover Dam or something. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Now is the time to shake your shake it up man um, quit quit looking around at anybody that's spoken that stuff or done that stuff cut them off just cut them off don't listen to another word don't justify it uh, if you have a problem and you want to still support them and oh but oh you know you're gonna start doing the Harold camping thing oh okay it's not this date it's the next day ah uh, no you have to stop now Vitally important. Have to stop now. We have to turn it around. Asking for, like with that pool cover, Lord, give us more time. Let's stop focusing on this other stuff so we can have more time to reach more people. To focus on the gospel and what our calling is in life. Because if you sit around and you keep waiting for this date and waiting for this date and waiting for this date, and nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. Are you doing anything? Sorry. Anyhow, the last thing I wanted to bring up, and I didn't realize this till yesterday, but some of the videos that I've done, Psalm 91. And then I, then I was urged to do Psalm 51. And then not too long ago I did Isaiah 61. And now here I am doing Isaiah 41. I didn't plan this at all. I Honestly, I didn't. But uh, anyhow, be blessed and stay the narrow road. <laughs>